guys, so in today's video I want to just talk a little bit about some of the products that I've been loving lately. You know, like I said this in a previous video, but I'm very picky with what I call my favorites because to me a favorite is something that I've used for a very long time that I almost kind of consider a holy grail, but honestly there's a difference between like a holy grail product and just something that I've been loving. So I don't know if I want to call this necessarily like a favorites video, but this is just like items that I've been really liking lately. So I think we should just kind of jump into it. Like some of these products are new, some of them are maybe a little bit older, some of them I've just kind of rediscovered and yeah we're just gonna kind of jump in here. So the first thing in my box here is actually a cleanser and I know I don't talk a lot about skincare but that's because I hate spending money on skincare. It's just not fun to me, it's just not really interesting. So whenever I get a product like this in a box I really like it because it's fun to test out but it's not something that I would have run out and bought myself because I don't know if it's going to be good or work for my skin at all. So this is the Skin & Co Whipped Cleansing Cream. Now I use my cleansers as a second step. I always take my makeup off like with a makeup wipe because I just like the feeling of that a lot more. I don't like rubbing creams around on my eyes. There's just something about that that just, I don't know, it just is a little bit icky for me. I just don't like it. So I really like this as my, you know, second cleanser, whatever you want to call it. I guess it's not a second cleanse. It's just the cleanser that I use after I've taken off most of my makeup with a makeup wipe. So I really like this. I feel like it gets my makeup off really well. I love that it's in a squeezy tube. I can't stand with like cleansers and stuff are in little jars and you have to dig your fingers into it and it's just a mess. But this I really, really like and I will definitely use up all of this and I will probably repurchase it. I wouldn't mind having another one of these, honestly. And I also had a toner from the same company that I ran out of that I really, really like that I also want to repurchase. So. Maybe next time I am actually out of this, I will repurchase this as well as the toner that's from the same line because I really like this. Another thing that I know I have mentioned probably in a lot of videos, but I don't know, maybe not all of you know this, but the CoverGirl brow pen has been my favorite brow pencil for such a long time now, probably, I don't even know, three months possibly? That's a long time for me. Maybe it's been two months. I don't remember. But ever since I, you know, tried this, I've been using it every single day and the one thing I will say is that I do go through these pretty fast, maybe every like two to three weeks, but then again I really like, you know, use a lot of product when I fill in my brows because I don't have any brows. So uh, yeah, um, this was, I want to say $6, $5. I get mine on Amazon because I'm lazy and they get here in two days, which is great. So I think I've now bought six of these. I have two backups that I have in my drawer right now, which, you know, is always nice to have backups of something that you use a lot. So I get mine in soft brown. It's actually not what I'm wearing today somehow because I had to open a new one of these and I was trying to go through something else that I had in my collection that I don't really like. But yeah, I really love these brow pens. I think I would compare them to a bit of a more pigmented formula than the ABH Brow Wiz. I used to really like the Brow Wiz, but now when I go back to it, I don't find it to be as pigmented as I like my brow pens to be. And it's also not like the most waxiest brow pen, which I hate brow pens that are too waxy. So I find this to be really, really good. And I would say between this and the e.l.f. brow pencil, I would probably pick this, but the e.l.f. one is actually my second favorite. And I'm so happy I was able to find drugstore brow pens that I really really like because it is one of those things that I go through really really fast so it's nice to have a cheaper alternative that I don't feel bad about you know repurchasing every time I run out so that has definitely been a favorite now for quite a while something else that's been a favorite of mine that I haven't used a lot in videos but I use it a lot like because I tend to film early in the morning like after I have breakfast and then as soon as I'm done filming it's usually lunchtime and then I kind of tend to take my uh, lip product off and Put on something else after and i've been using this gloss from jeffree star this is in the shade wet peach i love this i think this is so pretty and i feel like it just goes with a lot of looks too so you can see it's very sheer but it's got a bit of a pink and orange tint to it which i mean hence the peach but it's really 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 pretty and it's very comfortable it's kind of long lasting for being a gloss and even though there's a little bit of like shimmer particles in it, you can't really feel them on your lips. I feel like it's very comfortable for being a gloss with a little bit of glitter in it. So I've been really liking the glosses. I haven't used the other one that I have as much as this one since I bought this one because I find this color to be more versatile than the one that I have in... What's the name of that one? 
So I had to go grab it and this one is ice cold. I find this to not be as versatile as this one because I mean it's just more similar to my lip shade so I find that it's just easier to throw on with whatever look that I have on. So I have been really liking Jeffree Star's new glosses. I think they are great. Something else that is not new at all to me but this is like a part of a product that I've been loving. So this is the Essay Lauder Double Wear. I love this foundation. This has been one of my holy grail foundations now for probably the past six months ever since I bought this the first time but what I'm actually talking about is the pump that I bought for this I got this on Amazon after just like humming and hawing for so long and being like I hate this bottle I hate this bottle I hate that this bottle doesn't have a pump eventually I broke down and I bought the pump and I'm so happy I did because this makes such a big difference there's something about just having a pump on here and it doesn't make it as messy and I also feel like I use way less product when I have a pump for this foundation because otherwise you have to kind of just dump it out and hope for the best and usually too much product comes out and you can't really control it so I really am so happy I bought a pump for this and if any of you guys have this foundation and you don't have a pump <laughs> I will link the pump down below if you want to go check it out I want to say I paid six dollars for two of these so it comes in like a two pack so if you have another shade or if you I don't know, maybe it like breaks or something, you lose the cap, you have an extra one. So I think that's great. I mean, I, I love this foundation. This is the foundation that I have been wearing, I'd say 70% of the time and like the other 30, I'm kind of rotating through the ones that I do have. But this is the one that I seem to always reach for these days because it's so long lasting. It's nice and full coverage without being like, you know, like too much. Like it doesn't look cakey or anything. I just think it looks really nice and beautiful on the skin. So that's been a favorite of mine for a long time now. Something else that none of you guys are going to be surprised by, but these are my Raffer brushes. I know I've been talking about these so much, but I just, I love them. There's something about having nice quality, like high-end brushes that are really, really soft, that just picks up so much pigment and are so easy to blend with, so easy to work with. They just make putting on my makeup such a breeze and I just, I love these brushes. The only downside to them is with natural hair brushes, I didn't know this, is that like I said, they pick up so much product, but like the product kind of stays on the brushes. Usually with synthetic brushes, I can take my brush, like one of these, and I can just kind of wipe it off on my towel like this and it'll basically be clean. But once you get color on these brushes, like the color stays on them, <laughs> which is kind of annoying because I feel like once I've used one color with a natural hair brush, I can't just kind of wipe it off and go in with something else, you know? Like I feel like I'm going to be mixing the colors instead of just it being staining on the brush, which seems to happen a lot more with synthetic brushes. Maybe it's just me, maybe it's actually just staining and there's no color left on this, but I feel like there's color left on this. So I feel like I need to wash these more often, which kind of sucks, but the quality of these brushes are so good and I know you can't buy these right now because their Kickstarter ended but they will be available for individual sale in December I think so whenever that happens I will let you guys know and keep you guys posted because these brushes are honestly so good and I feel like by the time December comes around I'll have a better idea of like how they wash and how they hold up because I've only washed them now three times I think which is really not that much and I mean obviously nothing is going to change in three washes if they are good brushes which I feel like these are really good quality brushes so yeah I've been loving those brushes and I think my favorite brush that I've actually been surprised that I like as much as I do is this brush right here so this is kind of like a fluffy tapered brush and at first I was like oh, I used this to set underneath my eyes with and I used it for that for a long time but lately I've been using this for my bronzer and it's just like the perfect size to really be able to get the bronzer where I want it without it being too blown out because I like my bronzer to be more kind of focused and I like to know where I'm placing my bronzer because I'm not the kind of person who will like bake under here but I do like there to be not a sharp line but I do want a little bit of definition there and I find that this is so easy to just kind of go in and blend everything together with and it's nice to just kind of pack on the color with and it's just it's such a good brush for so many different things and I'm so happy I have two of these because I can use this even for my blush as well if one of my other blush brushes are dirty and I want to go in with a different color blush or something I can actually use this brush for that too and it's just it's such a versatile brush I just absolutely love it and I absolutely love all of these brushes I can't I can't even tell you how much I love them. So <laughs> I thought I would just mention them again for like the 342nd time. I don't know. I'm sorry I keep going on about these brushes, but they're honestly just so good. 
something that I kind of discovered lately that I didn't really think I liked. I think I got this in BoxyCharm as well. I feel like this happens a lot with the BoxyCharm products that I do get is that I get them and then I kind of just like put them away or maybe I'll try them once and be like, yeah, whatever, like it's fine. And then I go back to using the things that I know I really like. But this is the Artist Couture Loose Highlighter. This is in the shade Purple Dream. I love this. I think this is so beautiful. I think the first time I used this, I wasn't sure which brush to use it with, but ever since I've been using my uh, Sigma FO3 brush, which I, oh, there it is. This brush right here, this is like very kind of dense for being a highlighter brush, but I find that this deposits just enough product that it doesn't look too much, but it's still like nice and intense. I'll put a little bit more on because it's been a while since I applied my highlighter. But you can see it just gives such a beautiful kind of pinky glow and pink was not what i thought at first when i opened this like if you look at this and you look at my highlighter like this looks orange like i don't know how they're able to do that because this is almost like magic it's almost like it changes color when you put it on your face like it's crazy but this is just i mean it's just so beautiful and i've never been a fan of loose highlighters because i've just assumed that they would be really messy but honestly this is really not that messy at all and i just i'm a big fan of this and now it makes me intrigued and it makes me want to try more loose highlighters so if you know of any highlighters say you think would look good on my skin tone maybe some kind of like dual chrome highlighter so stuff like that like something kind of fancy you know like something that i wouldn't be able to get at a press for let me know down below because i would love to get maybe some more loose highlighters to add to my collection because now i'm like ooh, loose highlighters do you know so yeah i'm really happy that i actually ended up digging that out and trying it because it's one of those things that i feel like i just got lucky with that because most of the time i wouldn't like just randomly try a loose highlighter when I know I don't really like loose products but I'm happy I pulled that out so next on my list is something that oh my god I feel like I'm just raving about the same products over and over and over I'm sorry if you have heard about all of these products but when I find something I like I have a really hard time not using them so these are the cover effects monochromatic blush duo and bronzer duo I know I'm so sorry <sighs> I don't have words. I think these are so beautiful. I literally wear one of these every single day. I have two of the blushes. I have one of the bronzers. So the bronzer that I have is in Sunkissed Bronze. And this is just the perfect shade for me. Like literally perfect, especially now in the summer. I think this works so well. And what I like about this is that it does have like kind of a shimmery blush as well, but it doesn't look like a shimmery blush on your chin, so or on your cheek, I mean, or on your face, whatever, either way. So what I do is I go in with the matte bronzer first, and then if I feel like I've over applied a little bit, I can go in with the shimmer, and it kind of tones it down. And that's how I feel about the blushes too. It doesn't really add a lot of sheen, it just makes it a lot easier to blend it out and get it to the intensity that you want it. Like if you go in with too much of like the matte blush, I put a little bit of the shimmery blush over top to kind of tone it down. And it just works so beautifully and they're just they're so pretty so i'll show you both of the blushes that i have if you haven't seen these like a hundred times yet but this is what they look like so this one is the mojave mob i think this is called and then i also have the pink dahlia one which i don't know which one is my favorite honestly i think I can't choose. I like them both. These are my babies and I'm probably going to bring these on vacation, which when you're seeing this, I'm probably in Norway and I probably got these with me. So yeah, I'm really excited because I don't feel like I really need to buy a new blush ever again in, you know, a year because I'm just going to use these for the rest of the year because I love them. So the next thing on my list is something that I haven't really played around with that much. And this is not all of them, but this is a palette that I've kind of made for myself to bring traveling, but I want to talk about the Cleona Multichrome. So basically these are all the shimmer shadows that I'm bringing on vacation and all of these are from Cleona. So we have one of the iridescent ones and then we have four, five here of the Multichromes. I love these. I have played with them like four times now, I think. I am going to do a video showing you, you know, more looks with these and stuff. I'm Like I said, I'm going to bring these. So I want to kind of be a little bit productive while I'm gone, even though I'm not bringing my camera, but I'm gonna try to do more looks with these multichromes and take pictures and then when I come home, I'll do a video where I do like maybe another look and then I will show you a lot of the looks that I've done and explain how I did them because I find with these shadows, you don't need to do anything fancy. Like literally all you do is 
you put something in your crease, you pop one of these all over the lid and then you're pretty much set. So that's how I'm going to be using these and so I don't feel like I need to do tutorials every time I use one of these but I want to I want to show you what they are all going to look like you know on the lid and stuff so I'm really happy to be bringing these and I'm just I was so blown away by them when I tried them. I, like I said I've tried them like three times now and I just I love the look of them. I think they are so beautiful. They're so unique to my collection. And despite being really expensive, I'm so happy I bought them because I don't have anything like that. So, so far I just, I really, really like them. And now it makes me super intrigued to try more multichromes, but I'm going to hold off because I want to be able to use these, you know? I don't want to overwhelm myself with like 20 different multichromes when Honestly, I have these and they are so beautiful and I want to use them and I want to be happy using them. So I'm going to probably hold back and not buy any more multichromes for a while until I feel like I've gotten plenty of use out of these because they deserve it and I spent a lot of money on it so I just want to play with them. So speaking of highlighters though, I actually ended up picking up one of the uh, Wet n Wild one because I saw Beauty Bean use it. This was before all that Wet n Wild stuff happened and then I kind of felt bad for her because I know how much she loves this highlighter. It's in the shade Crystal High. So this is what it looks like. I guess it's from their Tavern collection. I forget what the collection was called. Was it called the Crystal Tavern? Is that the one? I don't know, but this is what the highlighter looks like and it's kind of like a... How would I explain this? It's so soft. It feels like a super sharp shadow. It's absolutely beautiful. It's kind of like an icy pink. I don't know if I have anything on my finger right now because I was swatching stuff earlier so all my fingers are like blue. But it's basically just like an icy pink highlighter but it's absolutely stunning. It's so smooth and it's very intense and I also find that sometimes with very light pink highlighters they're just a little bit too icy for me but I feel like I'm able to use this very easily. And despite the packaging being really cheap, I can't stand the Wet n Wild packaging. I don't know if it's just me, but this just isn't it for me. But the highlighter itself is beautiful. So I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to somehow depot this and put it into an empty palette or something. Because I can't stand this cheap plastic crap. Like, I'm just, I'm not about that life. But the highlighter itself is honestly really, really good. So if you're able to still get a hold of that, I would highly recommend it. I don't think it was more than like three, four dollars maybe? It wasn't a lot, but it's a beautiful highlighter for the price. So the next one is something that I'm honestly so mad that I like <laughs> because this is a new mascara and I got this mascara when I got a beautiful gift from uh, FragranceNet when they sent me some perfumes. They also added in this girl on mascara and this mascara is freaking fantastic. This is as good as my Bad Gal Bang, if not I don't want to say it's better <laughs> but this is such a good mascara and I hate that it's so good it's basically the same wand as my bad gal bang but the wand itself is not as bendable which means that I'm able to get closer to my lashes when I use it and really be able to pull through mascara and it just deposits the mascara so beautifully it's very lengthening it's also volumizing the thing about this mascara is so I think it's $33 and I'm not about to spend $33 on a new mascara so I wish I never got this, I wish I never tried this because now I want this for the rest of my life but I know it's not going to be part of my life for the rest of my life and that makes me really really sad. <laughs> so I'm trying not to use this every day because I absolutely love it. I've been like mixing it with other mascaras that I'm trying to use up. And it's just, it's just a fantastic mascara. And I also love the packaging. I think this is so like nice and sleek and it feels really good. It feels expensive. And I like things that feel expensive. I don't like this crap. This though, I can mess with this. This is, this is beautiful. Something else that I got in, I think it was BoxyCharm. I always confuse Try Beauty Box and BoxyCharm because I never remember what was in each box. But this is the Touch and Soul primer so this is the prime essence and i don't know if it says anything else on here but this is like a water-based primer and i don't know if it necessarily does anything but i've said before that i have a hard time finding primers that i actually like that doesn't just make my foundation look worse and i find this to just not do anything to my foundation i don't really feel like my foundation looks better when I use this but I like being able to have some kind of a protection between my foundation and my skin and so I've been using this and I quite like it. Like I said, does it do anything? I have no idea but I like how it feels, I like how it smells, it doesn't really have much of a scent to it. 
yeah, it doesn't smell like much. And I also like that it's water-based because I have oily skin, so whenever I put something kind of silicone on my skin, I feel like my skin kind of reacts a little bit to it and it doesn't like it. And most primers have silicones in them or they have something else in them that just doesn't vibe with me. So I've been really liking this primer. So I can't really say that it does much, but it's nice to have a primer that I feel like I can put on and it doesn't like do anything weird to my foundation. So I've been using this and I quite like it. Something else that I've just been obsessed with lately, and this is an eyeliner, this is, whoa. <laughs> this is the, oh man, LA Girl Shockwave Neon Eyeliner. I can never remember the name of these, but this is in the shade Fresh. This is basically just a turquoise. I've been using this so much lately. You guys know I've been using this all the time, and I just think it's great. It lasts on my waterline such a long time. It's probably my favorite out of the uh, neon liner range because they're a little bit hit or miss. I mean, they, they all work, but, not all of them go on as smoothly and as opaquely as this shade in particular does. And I think this one is a lot better than the equivalent in the ColourPop one. So this one is in the shade Zulu by ColourPop and this is the fresh one. And I think the formula on the fresh one is better than the ColourPop. But for the most part, I find the formulas to be pretty comparable. I do think I like the formula of the old ColourPop liners more than the new ones. I don't know what it is. I just... I feel like the older ones were creamier and easier to apply and just went on smoother, whereas the newer ones seem a little bit drier. That could just be me, but anyway, I do really like this LA Girl Liner and I feel like, especially now with my hair color, this is going to really make them pop. So if I wasn't already using this enough, I'm gonna bring this on vacation for sure. There's no doubt about that because I love it. So something that I actually got sent to me a while back, I wanna say it's been like a month now probably, but I got a beautiful package from uh, Emile Cordon. I don't know how to say that. I feel like that's how you say it, but they basically sent me like six of these beautiful kind of luxury lip balms. And I think that they are so good. Like you can't really see that I've used a lot of this, but like I said, I have six of them. One that I put into a giveaway and then four of the other ones I've been using and then one I've been saving up, but I love these. I think they are so, just they feel so nice on the lips and they have a little bit of a tint to it too. So if you wanted to, you could absolutely use this like on its own as kind of like a lip tint. So I'm gonna give you like a little bit of a swatch here of this one so you can see. It's just got a very, very slight tint of color to it and it's just so comfortable on the lips. And I've been looking for a new, like, good lip balm, so I'm so happy that I got sent these. I mean, that was so random. They reached out to me on Instagram, they're like, hey, can we send you some lip balms? I'm like, all right. <laughs> I mean, what am I supposed to say, you know? So I think these are beautiful. I really, really like them and I'm so thankful. So, I mean, they'll never watch this, but if you do, thank you. I really like these. So the last thing on my list is actually an eyeshadow palette and I don't really tend to talk about palettes in these kind of videos because I feel like I'm just so thorough in my palette reviews and stuff like that that I don't need to go on and on and on about the same palettes, you know what I mean? But maybe I should. But the palette that kind of blew me away, if you want to say that, is <laughs> probably not going to come as a surprise, but this is the Whale Song palette by Menagerie. There's something about the Menagerie palettes to me that just makes me happy, you know? I don't know if it's the packaging, I don't know if it's like the actual formula of the shadows, but it's like a combination of everything. I just feel like so much love goes into these palettes and also I just, it's one of those things, I feel like I'm very loyal to the brand and so when they come out with something and I end up really liking it, it just makes me so happy, you know? So I've just been loving this. I think this is a great palette. I just, it's just so beautiful, you know? But I will admit, I don't think it's like my favorite blue-green palette if you think of it just as in like the color story because it doesn't have that many shades in it. So for example, the Affinity 2 palette by Certify, I think I like the color scheme more in that one because it has basically like the same shades with more added, so you have more variety to choose from. Same with the Oceanic palette by Ace Beauté, but I just, I don't like the formula of those as much as I like the Whale Song palette, and for me, Formula wins over color story any day of the week, basically. Like if I need something that I know is going to be foolproof, that's not going to mess up my look, that I don't have to struggle with, I'm always going to reach for the palette that has the best formula over what has the best color story. But that's just me. And I think that's the reason why I love this palette so much because I just love the Menagerie formula. So those were all of the things on my list that I've been absolutely loving lately. I probably could have added more things into this as well, but 
I don't know, those were just like the things that came to my mind, you know, I don't want to force it, I don't want to be like, what have I been loving lately and I'm pulling through all my drawers, but these were just the things that were kind of like, you know, out in front of me that I use all the time, that I reach for all the time, that I just really like and I feel like I'll be liking these for, you know, quite a long time now. So yeah, thank you so much for watching a favorite video, which is not something I do very often. If you want to see more of these, let me know. And if you want to see some more content that is similar to this, I'll pop some up on the screen for you if I can find something. And if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.